Pichette syndrome is an autoimmune vasculitis affecting all vessel sizes. This causes recurrent oral aphthous ulcers that rove, an acronym which tells me other manifestations, which are rheumatic, ocular, vascular, and encephalopathic. Its pathogenesis is thought to involve genetically susceptible patients who are exposed to a range of environmental triggers, leading to an aberrant immune response. Certain human leukocyte antigens, particularly HLA-B51, is associated with this disease. Remember that these HLAs encode for specific MHC proteins which are used to present antigens to lymphocytes. Other associated genes include polymorphisms in the TNF and interleukin receptor genes. Environmental triggers include microbiome alterations, consuming certain histaminergic foods, and stress. The immune response seems to be driven by autoreactive T cells, specifically Th17 and Th1 cells. These lymphocytes induce the production of pro inflammatory cytokines like interferon gamma and IL 17, which drive neutrophilic infiltrations into lesions. Humoral responses also contribute to this condition, with evidence of autoantibody and immune complex formation. This is especially important in ocular manifestations, with aberrant B-cell responses to retinal self-antigens. A key pathological feature is vasculitis in both arteries and veins of any size. Its clinical features are diverse, so I remember that it causes ulcers that rove. Mucocutaneous ulcers are the most common feature and are recurrent and painful. Oral ulcers are typically the initial symptom, but genital ulcers are common too, only they're deeper and longer lasting. Rheumatic symptoms, like arthritis, occurs in 50% of patients. This is usually non-erosive and asymmetric, affecting small and medium joints. Ocular sequelae are probably the most important given the high severity and high frequency of eye disease. Anterior uveitis may lead to hypopion, which is an accumulation of exudate in the anterior chamber. Retinal vasculitis is another severe complication, and if ocular disease isn't treated, blindness occurs in most patients. Vascular disease might include arterial and venous manifestations like aneurysm and severe venous thrombosis, inducing things like Bud Chiari syndrome. Encephalopathy is my way to sneak in neurologic manifestations, including parenchymal sequelae like encephalopathy, but also non-parenchymal disease like central venous thrombosis. When investigating for Bichette syndrome, you should remember that there are no pathognomonic findings. This is why investigations should be focused on excluding differentials and looking for classic suggestive symptoms. Most lab tests are nonspecific, with inflammatory markers often being elevated. 50% of patients can be positive for HLA-B51, but this is less helpful than you think, given it's also positive in 20% of the population anyway. One useful test is the pathogy test. This is positive when a papule arises one to two days after the insertion of a 20-gauge needle into the skin. This occurs in about 50% of patients with Bichette's. Now, due to the complexity of diagnosis, one criteria has been proposed called the International Study Group Criteria for the Diagnosis of Bichette Syndrome. This requires oral ulcers and two other features for a diagnosis. Its management principles should be guided by the severity and pattern of disease, aiming to prevent long-term complications. First and foremost, severe uveitis occurs relatively commonly and can lead to permanent blindness, so prompt referrals to an ophthalmologist is essential and may be sight-saving. For ulcers in the acute setting, topical steroids are often used. If they're ineffective, oral steroids like prednisolone can be considered. For prophylaxis, Consider colchicine 500 micrograms daily. Alternatively, aprimolast has also been shown to be effective for the prevention of recurrent oral ulcers. This is an oral phosphodiesterase 4 inhibitor, which works by reducing the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines. You should keep in mind that a really common adverse effect is diarrhea. 
Major organ involvement, like eye disease and vascular manifestations, are often managed with immunomodulators, especially azathioprine. This is an anti-metabolite that can impair lymphocyte proliferation. You must remember that it interacts with allopurinol and febroxostat, which can reduce azathioprine metabolism, increasing the risk of severe bone marrow toxicity. For most patients, though, once disease has improved, you can consider reducing medications after about two years. Let's summarize with some mnemonics. I remember that it causes ulcers that rove. It's associated with HLA B51, and Turkey has a ton. Finally, you can think about the little rhyme, prevent ulcers on your peen by using a primalast or culture scene. If this works for two years, then attempt a wean. Thanks for watching Townsend Teaching.